Hey everyone! Today we've got a roundup of updates about Gladiator 2, that sequel nobody asked for. You didn't, I didn't, but I'm still gonna love watching it. Let's dive into the news. Pedro Pascal, who's set to play a major role in Gladiator 2, reveals how his character is also connected to Russell Crowe's Maximus, the protagonist of the first film. Paul Mescal, who's the lead in the second film, thinks Gladiator 2 and Wicked might replicate the buzz of Barbenheimer, that massive event with two unrelated movies that were duking it out with everyone watching both films on the same day. And here's something controversial. The Gladiator 2 trailer has been reworked with new music after negative reactions to the vibe that was completely different with that weird pop culture song. They tried to do what Deadpool and Wolverine did, throwing in some Madonna, but people weren't feeling it and neither was I. So what do you think? Let's talk about it and check out the new trailer with the updated music. Don't forget to hit that like button, folks, and drop a comment about which news story grabbed you the most, all right? And subscribe to the channel because I'm here every single day, twice a day, and as this channel grows, I can bring you even more content, got it? Now let's roll through the news. Oh, and of course, as is tradition, while you're doing all that, I'm gonna take a sip of my coffee, then we'll jump into the first story. Pedro Pascal reveals how his character in Gladiator 2 is connected to Russell Crowe's Maximus from the original Gladiator. Folks, Gladiator 2 won't see the return of Russell Crowe's incredible protagonist who left an indelible mark in the epic historical sequel. However, star Pedro Pascal highlights that his character will have a connection to Maximus Decimus Meridius in the new sequel. First things first, you already know. Comment below if you think Pedro Pascal will be able to live up to Maximus's legacy in Gladiator 2. I want to hear your thoughts. Let's continue this conversation in the comments. Don't forget to like and share the link to this video in your WhatsApp and Telegram groups so the people you care about can stay updated on this topic. Deal? Thanks. Let's keep going. Speaking to Vanity Fair, Pascal commented on his character, Lucius Verus and what fans can expect from him in the film. According to Pascal, his character was shaped by Maximus and will have similarities to him as they intend to continue the legacy of Crow's memorable performance in the first film. This film's identity is shaped by its legacy. It wouldn't make sense not to have that, Pedro Pascal said. Pascal also stated that Marcos learned from the best. So of course, this code of honor is deeply rooted in his training and his very existence. Pascal's character, first revealed at CinemaCom in April, is a former Roman general who was forced to become a gladiator after perceived insubordination. He's also partially responsible for Lucius Verus, played by Paul Mescal, the main character of Gladiator 2. Becoming a gladiator after invading Lucius's house during the reign of co-emperors Caracalla, played by Joseph Quinn, who is the human Tosca, and Geta, played by Fred Hetchinger. So there are kind of two emperors there. They even look like twins, don't they? What do you think? Comment below. It sure seems that way. While Marcus and Maximus are connected, Pascal emphasizes that Marcus is his own man. At the end of the day, he's a different person and that can't change who he is. Maximus is Maximus and that can't be replicated. This just makes Marcus capable of different things, said actor Pedro Pascal. Many people don't know, but Russell Crowe was considered to return in Gladiator 2. How? He died, didn't he? Anyway, director Ridley Scott initially planned for Maximus Crowe's character to return for Gladiator 2 despite having died from fatal injuries during his climactic fight with Commodus, who is played by Joaquin Phoenix, who also played the Joker. However, Scott later changed the story to focus on Lucius's journey, including the inspiration he drew from Maximus and his estrangement from his mother Lucilla, who is played by Connie Nielsen, who's returning for the film. Man, everyone's inspired by Maximus, aren't they? However, Crow has mixed feelings about Gladiator 2, recently admitting that the sequel makes him a bit uncomfortable. Gladiator 2 has big shoes to fill, considering the Oscar-winning success of the first film, which is hailed as one of the defining movies of the early 21st century and was a massive box office hit. Nevertheless, 
the first glimpses of the sequel have generated a lot of buzz, with fans believing that the film could achieve similar acclaim to the original. Paramount has faith in Gladiator 2's potential, with an executive praising its action sequences and the studio expecting a substantial financial return, given the budget of $250 million to $310 million. The math here is that the film needs to make two and a half to three times its budget, which means it needs to rake in around $800 million to $1 billion just to break even. That's a lot of pressure, especially considering that while sequels sometimes outdo the original, it's really tough to pull off. So what do you think? Drop a comment below if you believe the second movie can top the first one, okay? Gladiator 2 also features Derek Jacob and Oscar-winning actor Denzel Washington. I have high hopes for Tenko, and just looking at the cast, it's absolutely amazing. Besides promoting Gladiator 2, Pedro Pascal will soon start filming the Marvel Cinematic Universe reboot as Reed Richards in the Fantastic Four. So we've got Toshiwana and Reed Richards in Gladiator 2. It's already shaping up to be a hit, isn't it? Gladiator 2 premieres in international theaters on November 15th and in the United States on November 22nd. It's just around the corner and I'll be there for the premiere. Let me know in the comments if you'll be attending the premiere too. Considering all this fascinating information about Gladiator 2, in my opinion, it's clear that the sequel has enormous potential to deliver a story as impactful as the original, though it's certainly a challenging task. With Pedro Pascal bringing a fresh dynamic to Maximus's legacy and the presence of acclaimed actors like Denzel Washington, we can expect some truly memorable performances. The shift in the plot to focus on Lucius and his connection to Maximus promises rich and engaging character development. Now, I want to hear your thoughts. Are you excited to see how this story unfolds? Did you ask for a Gladiator 2? Is it like asking for Back to the Future 4? Leave your comments below and share your expectations for Gladiator 2. If you found this news interesting, please like, share, and subscribe. Paul Mescal believes that Gladiator 2 and Wicked can replicate the buzz of Barbenheimer. Folks, Gladiator 2 star. Paul Mescal has expressed optimism about the box office potential of the historical epic. The lead actor believes that the sequel and Universal Pictures musical fantasy film Wicked can mirror the success that Barbenheimer had last summer when they premiere this November. To start off, let me know in the comments below if you're more excited to see Gladiator 2 or Wicked in theaters, if you're a fan of musicals, or if you're planning to watch both just like with Barbenheimer, where we watched Oppenheimer and Barbie on the same day back to back as a marathon. Don't forget to like and share the link to this video in your WhatsApp and Telegram groups so that your friends can stay updated on this topic. Got it? You'll also help me grow this channel, and as the channel grows, I'll bring you more videos. Moving on, in an interview with Entertainment Tonight, Mescal discussed Gladiator 2 and Wicked premiering just a week apart, with the Gladiator sequel hitting theaters nationwide on November 22nd, while Wicked Part 1 debuts on the same day. With the 2024 box office gaining momentum this summer after a slow start, Mescal hopes that Gladiator 2 and Wicked can provide an additional boost this fall, thinking the films might replicate the record-breaking showdown between Barbie and Oppenheimer, which opened on the same day in July last year. Now here's a question that fits perfectly. Barbie and Oppenheimer rolled off the tongue, but what about Wicked Gladiator, Wicked Dieter, or Gladi Wicked? What should we call it? It doesn't quite have the same ring to it as Barbie and Oppenheimer. I think my preference would probably be Glick It, if it could have a similar effect to what we saw with Barbie and Oppenheimer. It's incredible because I think the movies couldn't be more different, yet it worked in that context before. In my opinion, the movies really had nothing to do with each other, so it might actually work out. The reason Mescal believes Gladiator 2 will deliver at the box office is how well the sequel balances paying homage to the Oscar-winning original film while telling a new story. In the actor's words, I think the main thing that excites me is how it honors the first one, but also the new direction the film takes. 
He thinks it's well balanced in terms of the physical action and the political aspects of the film. He says, I love fight scenes, obviously, but I also love those Game of Thrones style political plots like House of the Dragon. With the recent confirmation that Wicked will premiere just days after Gladiator 2 hits theaters, many experts and critics are saying this box office battle could potentially rival what Barbenheimer achieved. Barbie and Oppenheimer became huge critical successes after premiering last summer, with Barbie becoming the highest grossing film of 2023, reaching $1.44 billion worldwide, while Oppenheimer earned the most money for a biographical film and became the second highest grossing R-rated movie of all time. It made $953.8 million for a kind of almost a documentary. It's insane. These Oscar-winning films also helped Hollywood rake in over $4 billion in summer revenue for the first time in the post-pandemic era, where people don't go to the movies as much anymore, having gotten used to streaming at home. Just like Barbie and Oppenheimer, Gladiator 2 and Wicked are stark contrasts. The Gladiator sequel is an action-packed drama set in ancient Rome decades after the original. On the other hand, Wicked is a musical fantasy based on Gregory Maguire's novel of the same name and the characters from The Wizard of Oz. Gladiator 2 centers on Mescal's lead character, Lucius, the former heir to the throne who's estranged from his mother Lucilla, played by Connie Nielsen. Lucius aims to prove his worth as a gladiator, inspired by Maximus Decimus Meridius. For those who aren't aware, Wicked will be split into two parts. The first part follows Elphaba, played by Cynthia Erivo, the green-skinned character on her journey to becoming the beloved Wicked Witch of the West, as well as her friendship with Glinda the Good, played by Ariana Grande, who becomes her rival after a pivotal encounter with the wonderful Wizard of Oz, portrayed by Jeff Goldblum. Mescal headlines Gladiator 2, alongside an all-star cast including Denzel Washington, Joseph Quinn, Pedro Pascal, Fred Hetchinger, and Nielsen. The original Gladiator, starring Russell Crowe and Joaquin Phoenix, raked in over $465 million worldwide, snagging multiple Oscars and being hailed as a game changer for the sword and sandal genre. And now we're looking at needing to make anywhere from $800 million to $1 billion, considering they spent around $300 million to produce Gladiator 2. Gladiator 2 is set to hit international theaters on November 15th and will open in the United States on November 22nd. With all this information in mind, I personally think Gladiator 2 and Wicked have all the ingredients to replicate the explosive success we saw with Barbie and Oppenheimer. We've got a sequel to an epic classic that promises loads of action and emotion, plus a fantasy-filled musical that already has a huge fan base. It's thrilling to see how these films despite being so different, can attract diverse audiences and create a massive buzz at the box office. What do you all think? Do you think Gladiator 2 and Wicked will exceed expectations and make cinema history? They could do a promotion, couldn't they? Like you buy tickets for both and get, I don't know, maybe 30% off or something? If you found this news interesting, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. This is controversial. The Gladiator 2 trailer has been reworked with new music after negative reactions and now it has a completely different vibe. Gladiator 2 is officially one of the most anticipated movies of 2024, whether you asked for it or not. I didn't ask for this sequel to exist, but since it's happening, I'm hoping to go see it. Ridley Scott's sequel will take audiences back to the Colosseum and the first official trailer was recently released. Comment below if you've watched our reaction to the trailer. To start off, let us know in the comments if you prefer longer, more detailed trailers or shorter, more impactful ones. Don't forget to like and share this video link in your WhatsApp and Telegram groups so your friends can stay updated on this topic. By helping this channel grow, you'll get more videos from me in return. However, the audience had mixed reactions to the three-minute trailer for Gladiator 2. Let's quickly watch both of them to compare the music issue. Some comments were about how the movie trailer was edited, but most concerns were about the music used. Folks, I believe the music won't actually be in the movie, all right? It's just for the trailer.
it's different from Deadpool and Wolverine, where Madonna's music was actually in the film. Gladiator 2 won't star Margot Roberts since her character Maximus died at the end of the first movie. The sequel will focus on Pedro Pascal's central character, Lucius Verus, whom we saw as a child in the first film. He'll be building on Maximus's legacy. He'll follow in Maximus's footsteps, inspired by his legacy. Alongside him will be Oscar winner Denzel Washington, known for glory, Pedro Pascal from The Last of Us, and Joseph Quinn from A Quiet Place, Day One. Remember, Pedro Pascal is playing Reed Richards, Mr. Fantastic, and Joseph Quinn is the human torch in this new reimagining of the Fantastic Four. Now let's compare the music from both trailers. I'm going to play the first trailer here. First, I'll play the original version, then I'll play the other one. Let's compare them. Just a reminder, folks, we're not going to watch the whole thing here. I'll play some excerpts from the music. Make sure you're in a quiet place so we can hear the music clearly. I'll even mute my microphone, okay? Here we go. You defeated Maximus, now I give it to you. What is the dream of Rome? Joseph Quinn. What is the dream of Rome? If not the... Notice the atmosphere, feel the vibe, right? Look at the first one, then compare the atmosphere of the other. What's the main criticism we have for the other film? We're talking about Gladiator, we're talking about classic films, epic movies, right? That epic movie genre, like Lord of the Rings, you wouldn't put rap or Madonna's music in it. And I like Madonna, by the way. You wouldn't put Madonna's music in Lord of the Rings. You'd use music by Quinn, which I also love passionately in Lord of the Rings. You get what I'm saying? It's the same comparison here. Now let's consider the original music by Hans Zimmer. Man, he does stuff like Superman, for example. That's Superman's theme, you know? Which is epic, right? But anyway, let's move on to the next one. I'm going to set up my microphone here and let's continue. Because that's what they believe in, power. <laughs> that's just how it is, yes. It is what it is. People here don't remember this. For heaven's sake, let's keep going here. What could I give you that would satisfy this fury? belongs to Maximus. Now I give it to you. But who is Dreamer? The trailer has been re-edited, now running just over one minute and 40 seconds instead of the original three minutes, and features the iconic Gladiator soundtrack. The spine-tingling music that simultaneously warms our hearts is called Now We Are Free by Hans Zimmer. The video garnered over 30,000 views in less than a day with comments being much more positive compared to the original. One of the most liked comments pointed out that the reworked trailer is better than the real one, highlighting the significant impact of the music on the overall context. Another user wrote that this should be the official trailer, expressing a wish that Paramount could see it. Yet another user commented on the trailer's length, noting that the changed music and shorter, faster duration really elevate this trailer to new heights, proving that bigger isn't always better. These comments were made by viewers of the YouTube channel Adedit. You already know mine, it's much better than Hans Zimmer's. Nothing against the other music, but this score was made for the film. It fits perfectly. We know nostalgia makes a difference, meaning new people will come to see the film. It's a gladiator movie for crying out loud with an amazing coliseum. And at the same time, it'll attract the old school crowd who saw Gladiator 1 and absolutely love it. I find myself, I don't know, revisiting the film every three years or so and watching it again. If you enjoyed this video, please like, share, and subscribe. Recommendations for upcoming videos are now appearing on your screen, which you should definitely check out.